Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're going to talk about a new signature of Made in Japan Fender that's coming out later this year and next year. And that is this thing. I fully believe that this next limited edition release is very inspired off of the Asuka Telecaster that they did last year. This was supposed to be a Japan exclusive for a very popular anime. Fender made these things in Japan and they either didn't care about the rest of the world or didn't think they would be as interested in it to pay the high dollar values that they were costing. Because let's face it, there wasn't a lot special with this besides a custom paint job, an inlay, some fancy pickups. I mean, yeah, there were cool specs to it, but it didn't need to be as expensive as it was if it wasn't for the colliding of different brands. And I think this also took some influences from Taylor's attempt at a guitar from a video game. You can check out this review and demo if you want to watch me unbox Ellie's guitar, the Taylor 314 CE. But this time, instead of Fender doing an anime, they've also decided to go within the video game realm. This is a limited edition guitar for the new Final Fantasy XIV, or in other words, Final Fantasy XIV, which was developed and published by a company called Square Enix. Now, the Final Fantasy series is huge. The only one I've ever played was Crystal Chronicles, and I don't think I ever, like, played it right, but, you know, I thought it was fun. But I was more so about Mario and Pokemon growing up. But I do know that this franchise has a massive fan base, like, it's scary. And it's cool to see that they're doing a signature Stratocaster for this game, and they're actually going to make it usable within the game through a new patch. But before we even talk about this, I think Fender realized that they've been cutting themselves short doing Japan exclusive made in Japan guitars. Because as you gotta remember, the Asuka Tellies, out of nowhere, they just decided to release a couple hundred of them to the US way after the launch of them in Japan. And they're doing the exact same thing this time, except they're actually advertising it up front. So according to all the articles you can read online, this particular one's just from Guitar World. These are going to be first available for pre-order in Japan around May 25th and shipping in fall of 2021. Whereas just like the other ones, we're going to have to wait a while if you want one in America or whatnot. Because they say we can pre-order it in late 2021 and they're going to start shipping in early 2022. So if you want to be one of the first ones, you're still going to want to import it from Japan, but it's nice knowing that if you're patient, you don't have to pay the import duties and taxes because let's face it, when you buy a guitar that was made in Japan and bring it back to the US, you're going to have a sizable duties and customs bill. So it's nice knowing up front that if you can secure a pre-order in the United States, you can avoid that extra tax. I mean, you'll still have sales tax. It's not really going to be that much different. So I still think we'll see some people import these just to get them earlier. But it's nice knowing that the people that don't know how to do that, they still have an opportunity. But where this article was wrong is if you haven't already pre-ordered one of these within the one month of most people knowing about it, you're already too late. Sweetwater, I just happened to see that they had them on their website, so I emailed my sales rep, I said, okay, go ahead and write me down for one, just in case I can't get one from Japan. And now that I'm filming this video, yeah, I didn't think this guitar was going to end up being this popular, but I'm really glad I did that a couple of days ago, because these are now all sold out. They've booked all their pre-orders, and they're not even expecting them for almost another year. Maybe sooner if we're lucky. So I checked out Chicago Music Exchange, same story here. Continuing on here, it looks like Musician's Friend still has a couple of pre-orders, but do beware of Musician's Friend. I've pre-ordered stuff from them, and then eight months down the line, they tell you, oh, sorry, we overbooked this. You're not going to get it. I've been burnt a few times by this place, so be careful of this one. Maybe do that as a duplicate order, just to make sure you don't miss out. But it looks like there's a few other more obscure shops that maybe not everybody's heard of or it's not the first one you think of. So like this one, Pitbull Audio. Yeah, I've heard of them before. More guitars, haven't heard of them, but it looks like they're getting about five of them. And Manchester Music Mill, I've ordered from these guys before, I think anyways. That might have actually been where I got my Asuka Telly from, the second one anyways. And of course you get the resellers on eBay that are selling the pre-orders if you don't know how to import one yourself. I mean, holy cow, there's a whole bunch of those things on here. Yeah, be careful who you choose, not all of them are ethical. So moral of the story, if you want one of these, maybe contact me. We can work something out on my review and demo piece. But I see these as being guitars that increase in value like instantly. Because if we're a year out on pre-orders right now and they're starting to sell out, I this is going to be a big release. 
But enough talk about the market of these things before they even exist. Why are people going crazy over this? In my opinion, it is a really bland and ugly guitar. It's not the most attractive Made in Japan Fender that I've ever seen. It's not the most attractive Fender Stratocaster in general, but it does have a few interesting features. So first off, they've got this meteor inlay right here, which apparently ties into the game, which is a big thing when the guitar relates to the game in a very big way. It's kind of like the Ava inlay. So that's cool, and it's the only inlay on this rosewood fretboard. But it's the body that's kind of interesting here. So we have what appears to be like maybe a matte black body right here with a straight up black pick guard, black pickups. Everything's just been blacked out. It almost looks like maybe even a black chrome trim with output jack plate. But you get these interesting areas on each side of the instrument. There's a purple side and a blue side. And then when you flip it over to the back, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So I'm curious, does this guitar light up you know like those old dan electros that almost seems to be what this could be these things are thirty five hundred dollars brand new which is a ridiculous price but once again it's you know two companies names being on a very popular iconic guitar so that's what shoots it up and i'm sure these things will start selling for a lot more than thirty five hundred but reading this, it looks like it says rosin pieces on the body form stunning imitation crystals that glisten and gleam. So maybe there is no internal light. That would have been really cool and made it make more sense why they're so expensive, but it just appears it's like a faux crystalline structure, kind of like the Moto Stratocasters maybe, but you know, slightly different. But as far as pickups, they're rocking a trio of V-Mod single coils. I've heard of those, so it looks like they have upgraded electronics within here. And it's saying something about a push-pull on the second tone knob engages a limit break. That sounds really cool, right? What does it do? As you can see right here, it just pulls up, and that wires the bridge and middle pickup in series for a full-bodied humbucker-esque tone. Ah, oh, man. I was really hoping that'd be some cool, like, it makes spaceship sounds or something. <laughs> I can't say I've heard of a limit break before. Maybe that's just a different terminology that I'm not used to. It looks like we're just uh, rocking a modern C maple neck, okay, with a nine and a half inch radius, rosewood fretboard, classic Stratocaster. Uh, yeah. The only other thing I'm seeing that I could get pumped up about is a custom hard shell case. Knowing the whole Final Fantasy branding and the way they've done this, I'm really hoping this case looks fantastic and is special and is worth like a thousand dollar premium for this thing. But they are numbering them in order, that's also good, and it looks like they're doing that on the COA as well. So as of right now, I'm not all that pumped up for this one, but maybe it's because I don't necessarily understand the game. But I'll do the review and demo as a fan service, because despite not knowing everything about Neon Genesis Evangelion, this video did really well. And acoustic guitars normally bomb on my channel, but holy cow, that must have got shared somewhere. 188,000? I, <laughs> I remember when I posted that, it didn't get that many views and I was a little bit sad, yeah. And who knows, maybe I'm judging this thing too early, because in certain photos this actually looks pretty cool. So we'll have to see what the future holds on this. I'm tempted to still import one from Japan, that way I can get the review and demo out earlier. Despite paying a little bit more, I'm sure there's somebody that's willing to pay the slight premium over top of that to get it before the four to six month wait anyway. So if you're one of those guys who wants one of these and wants to pre-order it through my new Guitar Day program with import duties and taxes and everything thrown on there, reach out to me. Otherwise, I'll have to make the decision on my own if I wait for the Sweetwater one or not. But speaking of Japan here, I've got a couple other guitars that we can talk about today. Take a look at this relic Stratocaster. Oh wait, that's not a Stratocaster. <laughs> this is the first John Mayer Silver Sky that I've ever seen with a relic job. And I'm not sure if I like it or hate it. As far as a relic job goes, it's kind of poor in my opinion. It doesn't look that good. I mean, these John Mayer guitars haven't been around long enough to actually be trash that much but they're going for the vintage vibe of a stratocaster but it got me thinking is this the next step for the john mayer signature series guitars do they start relicking them because i can't say prs has really gone too far into relicking of guitars that's something kind of new for gibson even as like a big base of their operations now with the murphy labs in my opinion, this was probably some sort of a custom order, or maybe somebody actually did the relic job after the factory. Who knows? 
Sometimes it's hard to translate these Japanese listings. But it did spark some curiosity in me if this would ever start to happen. Because at first I thought, oh my goodness, this is a new thing that they're doing. But then I saw the serial number of a 2017 and it's like, nope, nope, that's definitely not something new. But at the end of the day, the Silver Sky is a fantastic guitar. So if you like that vintage looking Stratocaster, and judging by all the heavy relics that Fender sells people, maybe there is an untapped market right here. And the last guitar to talk about today is this Epiphone SG Traditional Pro. Now, I'm not sponsored to tell you about these, I just happen to be looking on Musician's Friends website today, because I do like ordering from them from time to time when they have stuff in stock. But this appears to be a new series of theirs. Now, the traditional pros are generally like Guitar Center exclusives, but Musician's Friend pulls from their same inventory pools. And what got me really excited about these is $449, that is a great value for an SG that looks like this. They've got four cool colors here, starting off with a red one. But wait, that's not just a regular red one, that's actually sparkling burgundy. So similar to the SG specials that you can get from the original collection, this is a very bright, vibrant ruby red that changes colors in the light because it's a metallic finish. So that on a 68 styled SG, that's pretty darn cool. But wait, it gets even better. Graphite Black. Yeah, this one's kind of boring. It's kind of similar to what Gibson just released under their exclusives collection. But great if you like Tony Iommi, ACDC, anybody that's ever used a black SG, you can get one on a relative budget. But then this one, metallic gold, man. Pure gold SGs, they do exist in the Gibson realm as well, but they're generally limited editions that are pretty hard to find and expensive nowadays. I guess the SG raw power would be the cheapest way to get into one of these. But then you're going to have a maple fretboard, so I mean this one's pretty light looking as well, but not quite as bright as maple. But a straight up gold finish looks pretty darn good on these. But the one that I was most excited about was this cobalt blue fade. Now I'm not quite sure why they called it a fade finish because it doesn't have the fade finish. Or does it? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? It looks like they have a veneer on top, kind of like what we saw in the other Epiphones that we've reviewed to hide how many pieces they're made out of. But then the unveneered edges are actually a brighter blue color. What? So it's going to be like a dark blue here and then light on the sides. That is... Interesting, that's the first time I've seen that. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess I kind of like the way that the neck is a brighter blue. So if you like various shades of blue, I could see how something like this would actually be pretty interesting. Does that mean they're using maple necks on these or is it just a really bright like sapele wood? Looks like mahogany body, mahogany neck. Okay, must just be a very bright mahogany or they have the specs wrong, who knows? Guess now that I look back at these, that might also be true. Do they have a darker front? This one just might actually be the reflecting of the light. But if it's not, I don't know, maybe I need to pick one of these things up to see if they actually look good or not. Judging on this gold one, I'm gonna guess no. It's just the lighting angles and differences. So these might all just be metallic finishes. And in that case, a metallic cobalt blue would actually be pretty darn cool. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.